What do you think of what happened in Boston? When we were looking oh, for bombing? pressure cooker and two teenagers, you know, and then they took over the whole city and shut it down. And to me, that looked a whole lot like martial law. Yeah. Um, oh, God, I can't believe. See, this is why I didn't want to give this talk, because I knew that we have this conversation. And now it's on the record. All right, let me take a step back. And no, no, you ha we have to deal with it. Let me take a step back and a deep breath, because this is a very painful thing to talk about. Um, so all over the world, we know, it's well established, uh, the State Department and intelligence agencies engage in theater, and it's what they do, it's spycraft, to create um, spectacles and events that people may not realize are spectacles and events, but that, well, like the, um, the overthrow of Mossadegh in the 50s in Iran. Uh, it, they, they'll funnel money to protesters, they'll, you know, fly people in to infiltrate protesters, they'll create fake newspapers, and so on. So we know that this happens in countries around the world. I believe that a law has been passed in the United States. I think it's part of the Defense Authorization Act. I need to confirm this. That, pardon me, now makes it legal to propagandize American citizens. Is that, do we know about that? Yeah, it's true. And is it in the NDAA or is it in something else? Do we know? It's a separate bill. It's a separate bill. And it's been passed. It's now law? Do we know what the name? Two years ago. Do we know what the name of it is? I don't remember, but I reported on it. Oh, thank you. Will you send me the link? Yeah. Thank you. So what this means is, and I, you know, as a journalist to say these words, just I can't tell you with what a heavy heart I say them, but we've entered an era in which it is not crazy to assess news events to see if they're real or not real. And in the United States as well as overseas. And in fact, it's kind of crazy not to. Now, you know, there's so much uh, hype about what I just said, and, and so I want to be very clear about it so it can't be taken out of context. <clears throat> you know, there's, <clears throat> pardon me, this kind of reflexive vilification of anyone speculating about that because they become a conspiracy theorist, right? Well, just bear with me. You know, I've often thought about this because our intelligence agencies, and for I respect spies, I mean, you know, who are doing, like before it got out of control, I believe we need intelligence, I believe we need intelligence agencies. I don't think there's anything dishonorable about being in the intelligence services if you obey the Constitution and the law. Um, but all over the world, our intelligence services are engaged in conspiring to create outcomes. That's their job, that's how they're successful. So <clears throat> now that it's illegal to propagandize in the United States, uh, it doesn't surprise me that there's more and more um, products coming up in popular culture, more and more events in the news stream that seem to be, to my eye, to be subsidized. Uh, let me give you some examples of that. I'm not talking about Boston right now. I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. We also talked earlier about infiltrators, right? and how they provoke violence. This is well established. So if we know that infiltrators by the police, NYPD, they've been documented, or other police forces, dress up like people they're not and provoke violence, why is it unthinkable that there might be spectacles that might drive an outcome in the news stream? Let me give you a couple of quick examples. And all I'm saying is we unfortunately, and I have to say this to my fellow journalists, journalists as well, we've entered a time in which we need to be very skeptical about the news stream and look at it critically and ask for more verification and more inquiry. And that's just being good reporters. And it makes it like this, there's spectacle fed into the news media in China. There's spectacle fed into, like Chile. How did Pinochet, you know, engage in his coup? He created uh, photographs of a cache of weapons that the terrorists had, you know, hidden. Was it real? Was it not? Most historians think it wasn't. I mean, this is like not unusual, you know, in the process of creating a closed society. So if laws have made it legal to assassinate American citizens and legal to propagandize them, why should it be crazy or weird to think 
that that might be for a reason, right? All right. I saw the movie uh, Zero Dark Thirty. Thank you very much. And I have worked on two presidential campaigns, so I recognize political talking points. And I wrote a piece saying, this reads like the Pentagon signed off on the script. Because there were like chunks of political talking points identifiable to anyone who's worked in Washington. Right? And you don't come up with those if you're a writer writing a screenplay. Um, and everyone was very upset. It was very controversial and scandalous. But in fact, belatedly, a news story came out saying that in fact the Pentagon had, I think, subsidized some of it, but had certainly consulted directly on the script. And I see more and more TV shows about the CIA and more and more TV shows about spies and gigantic blockbusters in which surveillance is normalized and gigantic blockbusters in which people are tortured to get them to talk in a way that might exonerate people who actually tortured people to get them to talk in Guantanamo. And there's all this money being pumped into these unaccountable, you know, terrorism fighting things. And now there's no law preventing that money from going through front organizations right into popular culture. So that's of interest to me. And so another thing I want to say, and there's so many people waiting to ask a question, but I just need to say this, is I'm skeptical of certain news events that seem more theatrical than the norm, or I want to ask questions about them. Because I was in CNN once recently, and they were reporting a story about a water skier who had been decapitated on a lake between Mexico and the United States, and it had something to do with ter you know, a terrorism threat. Right? And I was like, decapitated water skier. Sometimes you hear these things and it's like so <laughs> novelistic. You're like, real life doesn't work that way. Like these are so novelistic. Someone's coming up with it to make it stick in the popular imagination. Or it just makes you think, well, I'd like to document that. I'm a reporter. What's the source? And I, and it kept being just this one guy, Judge Arpajo in Texas. I may be mispronouncing his name. He's a very, oh, cons yeah. uh, yes. Our, yeah, he was the source, he was the source, he was the source. And I have this wonderful Facebook community all over the world. And I went on Facebook and I'm like, Mexican Facebook community, is there any reporting about a beheaded water skier in this lake, in this place in Mexico? And they're like, no, there's, what are you talking about? And there's nothing like that. There doesn't exist. So I turned to the CNN producer and said, do you have a second source for this story? And it was all over the news, all over the news, all over the news. And they're like, uh, and they checked and it's like, nope, just this guy, judge, whatever. And I'm like, well, can you find a second source? And they were blushing and embarrassed and they looked and they confessed that they didn't have a second source, which if you know what journalism is, you're <laughs> supposed to doc, you know, confirm it with two sources. So ever since that experience with CNN is running with this, no one's verifying it. Journalists aren't in a position to follow up on anything anymore because budgets are slashed and there's no investigative reporting. Um, all this nonsense can enter the media stream for purposes that have to do with advancing agendas because no one's checking. That's all I want to say about that. Um, can I take more questions? I, so Boston, I, I guess my feeling about any of these things is let's investigate. We need to investigate. We need to ask better questions. We need to interview the doctors at the hospital. We need to interview the victims. We need to you know, get all the footage ourselves. We need to train journalists, citizens to be journalists and to have websites. And I'm, I'm busy building one as a startup where citizen journalists can document events so that we're not leaving it to the gatekeepers.